In this video, I scientifically test the heart rate accuracy of the Amazfit T-Rex Pro. I'll test its overall accuracy during spinning, cycling, and weightlifting. In total, I test the Amazfit T-Rex Pro's heart rate accuracy during 13 training sessions. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now my channel is not so much about listing features, instead on my channel I try to test the accuracy of different measurements. I tested the Amazfit T-Rex Pro during 3 spinning workouts, 8 outdoor cycling sessions and during 2 weightlifting workouts. In this video we'll explore how accurate the heart rate tracking of the T-Rex Pro is and if this is better or worse during different workouts. In past videos, I tested the heart rate accuracy of the Amazfit GTR2 and the Amazfit GTS2 Mini. Both of these are beautiful watches, but they also had pretty poor heart rate tracking. The T-Rex Pro, on the other hand, is marketed as a tough and solid smartwatch, and I was therefore wondering if this would perform better than the GTR2 and the GTS2 Mini, which are both marketed more for their looks. The Amazfit T-Rex Pro offers 24-hour heart rate monitoring using BioTracker 2 PPG heart rate measurements, which is similar to what the GTR2 and the GTS2 Mini offer. Looking at the sensor array on the back of the T-Rex Pro, this indeed looks very similar to the sensor layout of the GTS2 Mini. Now let's take a look if the Amazfit T-Rex Pro performs better than the other Amazfit watches I tested. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare the T-Rex Pro to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the T-Rex Pro and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap for 3 spinning workouts, 8 outdoor cycling sessions and during 2 weightlifting workouts. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's start off with the accuracy during spinning. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy during spinning. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Amazfit T-Rex Pro. The blue line indicates perfect agreement so any measurement along this line has roughly the same value for the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and the T-Rex Pro. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the T-Rex Pro is half that of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, the T-Rex Pro did not perform great during spinning. Especially at a higher heart rate range, you can see there are many points near the red line, indicating that it detected about half the actual heart rate. Let's have a look at some of the individual training sessions to see where it makes these mistakes. Here you can see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the T-Rex Pro. As you can see I took 5 short breaks in this spinning session where my heart rate would dip. For this first spinning session the performance of the T-Rex Pro shows some issues. It shows a delay in picking up on my increased heart rate for many of the sessions. For this next spinning session this is even worse. For most of the second it missed picking up on my increase in heart rate, instead it keeps on detecting the lower heart rate I had while taking a rest. This is an issue we've seen before in some of the other Amazfit watches. Let's take a look at a third spinning session to see if this continues to be the case. Looking at this third spinning session, we see it shows a combination of the problems we saw in the first two sessions. Sometimes it shows a delay in picking up on my increases in heart rate, as you can see here and here. And sometimes it fails to pick up on my increase in heart rate for an entire segment, as you can see here, but also here. So far this is not looking very good. Let's now take a look at cycling outside, which I recorded whilst commuting to and from work. When I cycle outside there are many more bumps and I also tend to sweat a bit more in the sun, which might also influence the accuracy of the T-Rex Pro. Let's take a look. Here we see an overview of those measurements during cycling, and the agreement is arguably even worse here than during spinning. Many points are below the blue line, indicating that in these moments the T-Rex Pro detected a too low heart rate. Let's have a look at some of the individual cycling commutes to see why this is. Here we see the first cycling trip. Again in blue is the polar chest strap and in red the T-Rex Pro. 
As you can see, the watch really had some trouble accurately detecting my heart rate. It almost always detected a too low heart rate and it did not come close to detecting my actual heart rate for most of the trip. For this second commute here, we see that it's closer on average to my actual heart rate, but in general, it failed to pick up on any of the changes in my heart rate. I would say this is still a pretty poor result. And this is basically the same for all the times I cycled outside, as you can also see here and also here. The watch fails to accurately detect my heart rate, with it being unable to detect any of the changes in my heart rate. Often it cannot even follow the overall patterns in my heart rate, where it detects a way too low heart rate most of the time. Which is also what you can see in this session right here, and also in this training session right here. Now sometimes it's a bit closer, like in this training session right here and also in this session right here. However, I would still say the result is pretty bad overall. Finally, let's see how the T-Rex Pro performed during weightlifting. Now weightlifting is notoriously difficult for wrist-worn devices because during weightlifting I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist and this makes it hard for a watch to accurately detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. Let's take a look. This is an overview of the heart rate accuracy, similar to before, but now for weightlifting. Of course, the average heart rate is much lower during weightlifting than during cardio workouts. You can see there are quite a few points along the blue line now, compared to what we saw before for cycling outside. Still, however, we can see there are a lot of points below the blue line. Let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see why this is. Here we see the first weightlifting session. Again, in blue is my heart rate according to the chest trap, and in red is my heart rate according to the T-Rex Pro. Here you can see that the T-Rex Pro can pick up on the general patterns in my heart rate. However, it fails to pick up on the increases in heart rate that go with each of the sets that I did. And we can see something similar for the second training session right here. It can follow the overall patterns in my heart rate, but it fails to pick up on the peaks in heart rate that accompany each of the sets of weightlifting that I did. Overall, the performance of the T-Rex Pro when it comes to heart rate measurements is pretty bad. It was unable to pick up accurately on my heart rate during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. Now I have to say, when it comes to heart rate measurements, the Amazfit watches are amongst the worst watches I've tested so far. Interestingly though, the cheaper Amazfit Band 5 performed significantly better than the T-Rex Pro, GTS2 Mini and GTR2. Now to more concretely put into context how the Amazfit T-Rex Pro performed, let me show you how some of the other watches did when it comes to heart rate accuracy. Let's start off by comparing it against some other Amazfit devices I tested in the past. Here on the left is the overall accuracy of the Amazfit T-Rex Pro over all exercises, and on the right the overall accuracy of the Amazfit GTR2. As you can see, both did not perform very well, but the GTR2 performed even worse than the T-Rex Pro, with the GTR2 having almost no measurements along the blue line and most of them away from the blue line. Next, if we take a look at the GTS2 Mini here on the right that I recently reviewed, we see that both the T-Rex Pro and the GTS2 Mini appear to perform about equally well. Both have some points along the blue line, but there's also a significant amount of points away from the blue line. I would not recommend either of them if you're interested in tracking your heart rate. Now, this is the accuracy of the T-Rex Pro on the left compared to the accuracy of the Amazfit Band 5 on the right. As you can see, the Amazfit Band 5 performed significantly better than the T-Rex Pro. The Amazfit Band 5 has a significantly larger percentage of points along the blue line. The Amazfit Band 5 is also supposed to use the BioTracker 2, similar to the T-Rex Pro, so it might be that the sensor layout of the Amazfit Band 5 is just a bit better than that of the T-Rex Pro. Let's now see how the T-Rex Pro compares it to Fitbit devices, and let's start with the accuracy during spinning. First, we'll take a look at the Fitbit Inspire 2, plotted on the right here. On the left, again, I show the heart rate accuracy for the T-Rex Pro, and for both of these, I'm just focusing on spinning. As you can see, a much larger percentage of the points is along the blue line for the Fitbit Inspire 2 compared to the T-Rex Pro, which indicates that the Inspire 2 is more accurate. Now, if we look at a similar plot for the recently released Fitbit Lux here on the right, we see something similar. It's much more accurate than the T-Rex Pro. For the Fitbit Lux, almost all points are along the blue line, whereas for the T-Rex Pro, most points in the high heart rate range are closer to the red line. Next, if we look at weightlifting, we see that the contrast is not as stark as before. Though the Fitbit Inspire 2 still seems to perform somewhat better than the T-Rex Pro, both struggle with tracking my heart rate during weightlifting. And the same seems to be true for the Fitbit Lux depicted on the right here. It's slightly better than the T-Rex Pro, but both have their issues. Next, let's compare the overall accuracy during all exercises of the Huawei Band 6 to the results of the T-Rex Pro. So this is all types of exercises combined. As you can see, the Huawei Band 6 on the right here performed much better than the T-Rex Pro. The Huawei Band 6 shows much fewer points below the blue line compared to the T-Rex Pro. So if you care about heart rate accuracy and you want a relatively cheap smartwatch, I would recommend the Huawei Band 6 over the T-Rex Pro for sure. 
The second to last watch I want to look at is the Garmin Venue 2, which is depicted on the right here. I recently reviewed the Venue 2 and I was pleasantly surprised with its heart rate accuracy. As you can see, the Venue 2 performs significantly better than the T-Rex Pro, with the Venue 2 having most of its points along the blue line, whereas the T-Rex Pro has a lot of points away from the blue line. As I mentioned before, the Apple Watch is the best wristworm fitness tracker I've tested so far, at least when it comes to heart rate, which is also what you can see in the plot on the right here. Almost all points are along the blue line, which is in contrast to what we see for the Amazfit T-Rex Pro, which has a lot of points below the blue line. So without a doubt, I would recommend the Apple Watch for heart rate tracking if you have a bit of a bigger budget and of course you need to have an iPhone to use the Apple Watch. Overall, I'm not very satisfied with the heart rate accuracy of the Amazfit T-Rex Pro. It struggled during each of the types of exercise I did and I would personally not trust its heart rate readings. Of course, I just tested it on myself, so it could do better on others. However, I checked out this great video that Desfit made on the T-Rex Pro and he indeed also found it had some issues, though the issues he had seemed to be slightly less severe than the issues I encountered. He also observed that the watch performed relatively well during weightlifting, whereas based on just my results, I would judge the watch to be pretty bad under all circumstances. Still, based on all the data I've seen so far, I'm not very impressed with the Amazfit T-Rex Pro when it comes to heart rate accuracy. So, should you buy the Amazfit T-Rex Pro? Well, in short, as you might expect, no. In this price range, you can definitely find smartwatches that can more accurately track your heart rate. Even the much cheaper Huawei Band 6 is much more accurate than the Amazfit T-Rex Pro. Or if you want a device that can also accurately track your sleep, get a Fitbit device like the Fitbit Lux, Fitbit Charge series or Fitbit Inspire 2. The Whoop strap has good heart rate tracking and good sleep tracking. However, this is a subscription service, so it can be much more expensive. Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the watch for a limited number of days and just on me, and it'll be interesting to see how it performs on others. Furthermore, it might perform differently during different types of exercises like running or rock climbing. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.